Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Wired Nerdy Podcast. This is season number two, episode number 24. My name is Keith. I'm with Doug. Doug, how you doing, buddy? Doing good. Uh, pretty good week. I uh, had a Google keynote address and then uh, quite a few interesting things in the news to talk about. So I'm excited to get into it. Yeah, it'll be good. Uh, I, I'm going to just full this. Disp- you know, disclaimer right out the gate, Doug's going to lead us through our main topic, which is that Google Keynote. I I haven't watched it yet, so I didn't do my homework. I've been busy. It's been a crazy week. Got busy mowing the yard today. I was like, oh, I'll watch it later. So we're going to have Doug guide us. But, you know, that's okay because Doug is our resident uh, Android Google expert here. So it'll be good. But before we get to that, we're going to do some nerd news. You ready to do it? Yeah, let's key it up. All right, let's queue up the nerd news. Nerd News. And let me go ahead and get the share going here. Yeah. Now, this first one is about a movie that's in the theaters. And I haven't seen it yet. Have you? I have not. Uh, We're talking about Aliens Romulus. That's right. I've heard good things. They're saying, like, I believe... If you go to Rotten Tomatoes, they took and rated all of them. And I think this is clocking in at number three as far as like out of like nine out of the series. They're saying this is the third best reviewed one. But it's not just the movie we're going to talk about because I haven't yet to see it yet. But we're going to talk about popcorn buckets. <laughs> and there are yeah. so many different ones of these. And I know I've sent you a few of them. But it's funny to me. Do you think popcorn buckets are the thing that they believe that's like for collectors, that's what's going to bring people like back into the theaters? Is that the idea behind it? Yeah, I think so. Because you've definitely seen a wave since COVID and that whole pandemic era of, hey, we need to get people back in the seats, back in the theaters. So I think this is one marketing strategy, and I think it's great. Uh, Some of the popcorn buckets have failed terribly. (laughs) <laughs> but some have been hilarious, like the Deadpool Wolverine mouth. Yeah, yeah. And uh, this one with uh, some kind of chemical container. It almost reminds me of the ooze container from Ninja Turtles. It kind of does look like that. They put LEDs at the bottom of this container, and it looks like it's got uh, shattered, like it's broken, uh, with a face hugger plastic face hugger on the outside of it. Uh, and it has the Waylon Wutani logo on it, which I think is really cool. I'm going to be honest with you. This one so far uh, that I've seen, we're going to show a few other. This is my favorite one. I think this one's really cool. This is from Regal, uh, Regal Theaters, by the way. I think each theater is doing their kind of like own take on them. And I, I'm assuming they're entering agreements because they obviously have to get licensing deals. It's a cool concept to give away merch uh, as a part of a movie. It reminds me of the old days. Remember back in the 90s and 80s where uh, McDonald's would do those glasses? You know, It's like, funny you say that <laughs> because McDonald's just this week has uh, released glasses. They're bringing them back. Yeah. They're bringing them back. They had the collect- – so and when I say glasses, there's two types. Like well, I remember when the Batman movie came out, the one with Michael Keaton, there was the 32-inch plastic cups with this artwork on it. That was cool. But there was actual glass glass. Hmm. Uh, and usually it would, you know, be Smurfs or, you know, princesses and Disney princesses. or There was all different kinds of them. And oftentimes it would coincide with a movie. If theaters could start doing that, maybe it could be their way in, yeah. you know? So, that, yeah, that one's definitely my favorite. If I scroll down, now that was Regal. Uh, AMC, this was an interesting one. A different take on it. Yeah, so they, it looks like they've got a normal size popcorn bucket, but a face hugger is on the side of it, yeah. hugging it. I feel like they phoned this one in a little bit. Uh, this one, I don't know if it's actually their, it, it might be like a metal bucket, or okay. I don't think it's their normal paper bucket. You know, It does look metal at the top, like aluminum. So, And I'm sure this is glued or somehow yeah. connected to it. Yeah, and you know people are going to be collecting these things. Oh, now, okay. Sinmark Theaters, which I haven't heard of them, they have an interesting one. Uh, this is... They have a very interesting one. It is the <laughs> head cool. of the uh, Xenomorph, if that's yeah. the name of it. Yep. Yeah. And uh, I'm assuming Popcorn goes into the top. <laughs> yeah, so the Xenomorph head, for those that don't know, it's like uh, in the it's movies, long. four, five, six foot long. Yeah. Yeah, that one's tube shaped head. So yeah, it'll it's be very eating popcorn out of that. It's very elaborate. I think those are the main ones, though. That, and, and, and I do remember seeing that at the very top. Here's a different picture. See right there at the top? There's a flap on top of the alien head. Yeah. 
that swings open on a hinge. Now, I will say, I think this holds quite a bit of popcorn because it's yeah. so long, which is kind of cool. And they have cups that match, which is kind of cool. You know, what would have been better is if they have a little button where the little mouth pushes <laughs> out and <laughs> gives you a little <laughs> scoop of popcorn. <laughs> That would be cool. Be now, I will say this. If you look closely at these cups, they're like tumblers and they have the alien head on them. But on the inside of the insulated part is a fluid and it moves. It's green. looks like acid. And it looks oh. like it's coming from the mouth. The that cups are kind of cool on this one. Not going to lie. Cool. So I don't know, man. I, I love that they're trying something new. I think this is, it's really cool. But what's funny is like, I don't, I think the downside is where we live. We live in a bit of a rural area. I don't ever see these popcorn buckets in no, these rural areas. I don't think the mom and pop, you know, B and B's uh, uh, and those kinds have really picked onto it. So you probably have to go to a city where they have like you know these larger distributors. Oh, they actually have uh, glass cups on this one too. Ooh, very nice. So the Alamo Draft House. I for, I missed this one. I didn't mean to scroll over it. Just like we were talking about with the, I, I honestly, I swear, if I didn't see this. We were just talking about the McDonald's having glass cups. That's what these are. <laughs> oh, and uh, they've got uh, kind of themed burgers and nachos, but they also have a little pin set. Huh. Uh, I know you have some pins on your backpack. I do. I love pins. Oh, they do have a pin set. You know, I think this is cool. This is a cool marketing. I, I like that they're doing this. I'm, I, that's yeah. awesome. I think that's really, especially if you're like a collector. That's you know, neat. the movies have been pretty magical. That's kind of the key phrase they use. But uh, I hate to see it die. There's something about watching a movie on your couch. Yeah, you have the bath and you pause whenever you want. But there's something about going to the movie, smelling the popcorn, the atmosphere, all that, that I really don't want to go away anytime soon. But I understand it's pretty expensive. You know, working at a movie theater I have for like nine years, I understand the pricing. It sucks, but uh, just to kind of explain it to everybody else, the tickets, uh, you pay the tickets, that goes all to the uh, movie house, usually the producers and the uh, the filmmakers, but then the popcorn, the soda and stuff is so high. What's so high? Because you're paying the movie theater and you're paying the people that work there and stuff. So to get off my soapbox, it is a little high, but you're basically paying the movie house to host it, if that makes sense. It makes a little sense. Now, one thing I want to provide clarity on, and I just, while Doug was talking there, I'm actually glad you went on your soapbox because I was able to validate something. Alamo Draft House, do you know what that is? I have do you not. Okay. Have you heard of these movie theaters that serve you dinner while you... I have, uh, but I've never been to one. I've been to the ones with the Lazy Boys. Yeah, and th this kind of has that, and they have tables in front of them. Now, my daughter, we've had her on the podcast, Leah, she lives in Orlando, and she's been to this kind of a place numerous times and that's why that's and this honestly makes this even more cool with their dinner. So you go into the movie theater, you get assigned seating, you watch a movie and then they serve you dinner. Um, and they do themed dishes tied. That's what these are. That's why there's a burger and that's what, that's what Alamo draft house is. By the way, Doug, I think there's one in Kansas city. Hey, uh, we may have we to take a wire dirty trip, trip. Absolutely. <laughs> but it's cool that they're doing uh, for these, theaters that do dinner that they actually have themes that match the movie that makes it way cooler i, I don't know I, I thought that was an interesting thing they had food i thought wait a minute surely this isn't one of those uh food and and dinner thing and it is that's what the alamo draft house is and i looked it up here uh i have not done this myself i've always said that you know i wanted to do it uh but oh they have one in st louis look at this that's even closer to us oh yeah pretty cool man uh, let's schedule a trip. Oh, we're gonna do it. Beetle this will be one of our things is, uh, coming up. So get some get some dinner. Yeah, watch uh, watch a good movie. Uh, so anyway, sorry we went down a rabbit hole. It's just yeah. I happened to see that and I thought, that, but no, I've always wanted to do these. My daughter Leah has gone to them many times, and I think my youngest went and visited her in Florida. They actually went to one. So it's kind of a cool concept, I think. Yeah, I uh, you know popcorn and snacks and the soda is all I've experienced in a movie. So going somewhere here. That sounds awesome. Yeah. The addition of the Lazy Boys was uh, crazy. Yeah. So that's about the wildest I've got. Yeah, the, the themes. So, All right, man. That does it for popcorn buzz buckets. Uh, I'm going to go on to the next one. I've got a lot of, of the heavy uh, new stuff, guys. So I'm going to be running through this because Doug's going to take over for the main topic. <laughs> yeah. 
so this next one I'm super excited about. I don't know if you saw this or not, Doug. Uh, did you get a chance to read this one? Uh, the... uh, I skimmed through it. Uh, I'll let you <sighs> say some stuff. I'm pretty excited. Oh, yeah, definitely. I want your take on it. So Microsoft is now we've we've had this conversation numerous times on this podcast. We've talked about the Steam Deck and we've talked about the ROG Ally and all, there's all of these handheld video gaming devices that have taken off since the Steam Deck, which is made by a company named Valve. And it's really kind of blown up. Think of it like a switch, but it's pretty much a full blown computer. And the cool thing about it is not only can you do modern gaming with it, but you can also do retro gaming with it, whether it's emulation, you know, all types of stuff. Well, one of the things that the big difference has always been that there's an operating system difference. Steam OS is Linux based. That was made by Valve. It's very stable, very good. And then rumors are Windows is working on a Windows for handheld version. Well, it looks like Microsoft um, is now in the handheld PC gaming race. and uh, Valve is ready to capitalize on its impressive Steam OS. Now, what this means is, so it's twofold. Rumors abound that Microsoft uh, is going to be acting relatively soon on having a Windows relevant handheld gaming device, right, to to compete. Well, not to be outbeat, the uh, let's see here. Valve has confirmed to The Verge that this week it's working on Steam OS. Now, keep in mind, Steam OS is what runs the Steam Deck, which is probably the most popular one their os which runs great it is awesome will work on its competitors like the asus rogue ally and other of these devices this is a big deal because what this means is that this space is blowing up and there's going to be cross-platform compatibility and at the end of the day doug everybody wins as if you're a gamer because you can take your entire library with you on your hand whether you prefer windows or whether you prefer steam os uh and I bet this is going to lead that if Windows releases a version of their operating system, their handheld version, that means you can run it on the Steam Deck as well. So you get this cross-pollination back and forth. I'm excited about this. Uh, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I'm super excited. When these uh, companies get to competing back and forth, it only means wins for the end user. So adding uh, Windows OS, think of all the things you could do now with your Steam Deck on the go. I mean, this may, I don't know that it's a laptop replacement, but it will definitely save a lot of space in my luggage on a trip. Some people have replaced their computers with these devices because you, you can dock it, especially the ones like the Rogue Alley that can run Windows, like a full-blown version of Windows. So you could do that. It's not as powerful as your laptop, though. Um, but yeah, man, I I went down the rabbit hole, got one of these, and I I absolutely love it. So I'm excited about this, and I'm excited for this space to, to grow. So this absolutely. is great news. All right. I almost was going to say this. This is probably one of the first nerd news where we don't have an AI lane. Probably in over a year, two years now. <laughs> so we finally broke the cycle. It's we finally broke the cycle. There'll probably be some breakthrough next week. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So in comic book news, I added this because I thought it was weird. There's always co like crossovers in comic books. Uh, this is, I don't know, I guess in time for the holiday season, which is right around the corner. Uh, DC Comics has announced that there is a Batman and Santa Claus crossover called Silent Night Returns. <laughs> it looks interesting. <laughs> you know, there was a Ninja Turtle uh, Batman crossover as well. I, I believe I've seen that yet, but not yeah. uh, good old St. Nicholas here. Yeah. No, no, I don't know. I just thought it was weird. I threw it in there because I was like, wow, they're already playing for Christmas. Okay, what, whatever. I mean, if you scroll down, some of the artwork on the reindeer and the sled is uh, phenomenal. Let me see here. I didn't scroll that. Oh, that is actually pretty wicked. Look at that. <laughs> I mean, Santa Claus looks like a badass. So. He does. You know, they'll make it a movie before long. And then you get some uh, Tinder shots. of What uh, the Santa heck of, of Santa Claus? This is, that's weird. Wow. I did not scroll down. I'm glad you said something. You're right. <laughs> Look at DC queuing up their Christmas issues. That's See, awesome. they don't have the uh, the uh, boxes, what I, I'm drawing blank. You know, the, the frames? The voice boxes of what their text. Oh, yeah. It's in yeah. development. Yeah. Yeah. So we don't really dialogue. know what's going on. Dialogue. Thank there you. you go. I yeah. try to use big words sometimes. Hey, but. no worries, man. No worries. All right. Let's keep on going down that route. Uh, switching over to video games. Have you played any of the Lego video games. I have, and I saw this on the list. I'm glad you added it, because some of the Lego editions, like 
Star Wars and Indiana Jones have been phenomenal. Uh, these games are great, um, especially if you play them with a friend. I've played these with almost all of my kids. They're all unbelievably fun. The yeah. ones that I've played the most, uh, I would definitely say is the Star Wars one. Yeah. I played a little bit of the Jurassic World, obviously uh, Lego DC. I haven't done the super villains, but I did the Lego Batman and uh, one and two, which is awesome. Harry Potter ones are great. Honestly, these are just so good. Here's the good news. If you like them, they have all of these for sale at the Indie Humble Bundle, which I mentioned that before, that they do these with video games, and it all goes to a charity, a good work. Um, and they also have what's cool is an 85% off for Star Wars, the Skywalker saga. Now, what's cool, that's episode one all the way through the very end. I mean, that's like tons of games. Yeah. Um, and if I bring that up here, and I can say, I love this place, by the way. So you can get all 19 of the Lego games for 15 bucks. I mean, that is amazing. And it goes to a good cause. I think their charity of choice is going to be uh, the charity water, which basically gives water to under, you know, third world countries that don't have it. Uh, these are all steam coats. So it's meant for PC, just so you know. Sometimes they'll sell console related ones, but all of these um, will work uh, on your your computer. Now, what's cool about it is we were just talking about it. if you want to take it on the go. These games are perfect if you had one of those uh, Steam decks or Rogue Allies. So, Very nice. Yeah, it's a great deal. Couldn't can't pass that up if you don't have those. Um, and the cool thing is if you buy these and you already own one, you can take that Steam code and give it to a friend. So let's say you already own Batman three beyond Gotham or whatever. Um, you can give that to a friend if you already owned it and then they can activate it in their steam. So, I mean, that is a lot of games. It's a butt ton of games and they're good games. They're all really, really good games. They're fun. Um, and they're great for kids and adults alike. I, I cannot recommend these enough. So I had to throw that in there. All right. What else we got now? I'm excited about this. Do you like beat em up games? Yeah, uh, like old school side scrollers. Yeah, like the side scroll, like the X Men. Remember the arcade or the Ninja Turtle one? Yep. Uh, Final Fight was that one? Yes, I think? that's I like perfect. That one a lot. Classic. That's actually one of my all time favorite. I love beat 'em ups. The recently they had the Ninja Turtle Shredder's Revenge. My daughter Cora and I play these. We love playing them together. We beat Shredder's Revenge together. We love them. All of the old ones that like Brian had given us, like. Uh, you know, for the emulation on that, mm -hmm. but they've got one coming up. It's GI Joe, the wrath of Cobra and some multiplayer nice. being them up and they released a trailer for it. Uh, and it looks, it looks pretty awesome. I was going to see if they actually have footage on this. It's fun though. Like when you have that much going on the screen and you're all dividing, conking, like you get the top half, that's what Core and I do is break it down. Like, I'll get the top, you get the bottom. Because yep. some of these games, if you can hurt each other, uh, you know, you can beat each other up. And so, uh, yeah, man, I'm excited. about. It. I love beat em up games. Yep, it looks really good. All right, last one on my list here. For all you uh, enthusiasts out there that collect, got all these ads. I used, I went to Geek Tyrant this time for some of our news just to mix it up a little bit. So they have a lot of ads that pop up. And, of course, really loud things on there on the trailers that i can't mute uh so this is a rare sealed copy of the classic nintendo game castlevania sells for over ninety thousand dollars and it says uh the classic 1986 uh video game system had castlevania and it says here a rare sealed hang tag copy of castlevania sold for ninety one thousand on ebay after a bidding war that started at $37,000. The package still even had the original sticker and price of $27.87 stamped on it. You never look back at these and think, man, I really should have kept some of my stuff. <laughs> you know, if we, uh, there's always the saying, if we know now what we what did I, back then. No, oh, we'd be loaded. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, and you can see, so it's shrink wrapped and everything. Now, this, of course, is not the most expensive video game. There's some that are way more expensive than this, but that's that's pretty good for Castlevania. Did you own this or I know you're a Super I, Nintendo guy because you're a little bit younger uh, yeah. than I am. And I and I love Super Nintendo, too. It, it's honestly my favorite. But Nintendo was awesome. But uh, did you have a Nintendo? I did. Uh, we played a lot of sports games. Mm -hmm. 
uh, like um, Tech minor Mobo. league uh, World Series stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, the skating, uh, hockey. Oh, Did you yeah. have any of those? Yeah, it's going to draw. Blade, Blades of Steel was yes, a popular because one. Blades of Steel and yeah. halftime. You would play a galaxy uh, shooter game. You did. I forgot about that. Blades of... Was it Blades of Steel or Blades of Glory? I think it was Blades, Blades of Steel. Steel. Uh, oh, it yes. was an awesome uh, hockey game. There we go. Yeah, that's it right there. And then uh, Metal Gear. We played that uh, on the NES. Duck Hunt, obviously. Uh, Super Mario's. Yeah, so you had one. Did you ever get into Castlevania? So I, I got into Castlevania on the Super Nintendo along with uh, the little side scroller where you die and the guy's uh, armor falls off. Oh, Metroid. Yeah. Uh, well, it Metroid? was a castle version. Oh, you're talking about Ghost and Ghouls. Yes, thank you. Okay. Yeah. Wow, guys, we're in trouble if Doug can't think of this stuff and we're and, about to uh, head into Brian's, the main topic. Uh, going to send this hate mail. Oh, so. here, you are going to hear it from him, our but resident video that. game. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. We're uh, we're in trouble. Let's see. Ghost and Ghouls. This is the uh, now you, Super Nintendo version or were Super you Ghost NES? Super Ghost and Ghouls, I believe. I played the Super Nintendo version. Yeah. See, these are all the like iterations of it that you can see here. I, you know, Super Ghost and Ghouls was my favorite. I thought it was the prettiest version of it. Uh, it's a hard game, though. Like, it's considered a very, very difficult side scroller, like platformer. Yeah. So it's a great. It's a fun game. But you're right. I loved how the armor would like bounce off the guy. But man, it. I remember this game being tough. It I never beat tough. it. <laughs> I mean, once you, so your armor is one level. Uh, once you lose your armor, I believe you're dead after that. It doesn't give you much uh, slack. To, nope. Know. And things are flying all over the screen. Oh, okay. <clears throat> it's not like a beat em up. It's more of a side scroller than like a, you know. Yeah. I don't know. It's like so Altered kinda, Beast. That's what it reminds me of. <laughs> yeah. On the same uh, kind of topic, I played. Uh, uh, metal, uh, oh, I am <laughs> slacking today. Metal Slug, that's it. Okay. I love Metal Slug. Yeah, so it's kind of a side scrolling. You uh, can jump in tanks and stuff. Now that one was fun because you had um, a lot of ammunition. <laughs> like Tons you didn't run out. Kind of yeah. amazing. It's like a souped up, cartoony version of Contra. Yeah, remember? I remember this at the local grocery store. They had a Neo Geo cabinet and. Mm-hmm. Uh, Metal Slug and uh, Bubble Popper. Bubble yeah, bubble. Bubble. yeah, yep. Uh, but, you know, Metal Slug, though, to me, the graphics, because it's Neo Geo, always were so impressive. It looked like a oh, yeah. cartoon. I mean, these are great to go back and revisit. Um, these are fun ones. And if you have a, a friend to play with on this as well, I'll, I'll, yeah, very, very cool. So instead of I, instead of a beat 'em up this is a shoot 'em up is yep. what I would dare say. Yeah. Uh, but no, Metal Slug absolutely classic I, I love those games and there's like a billion of them there's tons of them oh yeah and they put them on like every single platform known to man so uh but it's it's a great game great game hey in the uh google doc i put the most expensive game ever sold if you want to pull that up for us i think we talked about this at one point uh yeah so it's uh not too surprising to put it in the um, all right, there it is. Got it. Yeah. Super Mario. Yeah. It's, uh, or sorry, uh, 64. Super Mario 64, rarest video game ever. So, sold. Super Mario Brothers for the uh, NES in August of 21, they sold a $2 million copy uh, for the uh, NES uh, 1985 console there. Sealed in its original pack- packaging. So. What's odd about this is it says New York Times reported an anonymous collector had plunked down $2 million for a copy of Nintendo's flagship video game made for its original 1980. So that would be the NES. The cartridge was sealed in its original packaging and rarity for video games and link. Okay, got it. Uh, but here's what's weird. It says it's for the NES, but they have a picture here of... Oh, that's why. Okay, I'm with you. That's the second story. They, it's the way they stack the photos. So there it is. So it's graded. We talked about this. Uh, it's right. There's a 9.8 yeah. grading of Mario Bros. Very, right below that, number two is what I was getting tripped up on, is the second most expensive, as of this article writing, was uh, $1.56 and that's Super Mario 64. That's where I was getting confused because of the yeah. way they stack the yeah. images. 
Uh, there's a Legend of Zelda, $870,000. So that's number three. Another Super Mario Brothers yep. sold for 660000 Yep. And another Super Mario Brothers sold for probably different, uh, the re releases as well, for 114000 9.4. Yep. Yeah. So I thought and, that article yeah. was interesting. That kind of it is. $2 million for a game that you'll probably never open because that would <laughs> no, you will totally not. diminish the value. To me, like, who pays that? Like, if you have that money, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, whatever. I can think of a lot of things I don't want to spend $2 million on. But oh, I'm not absolutely. a collector, so you know me. But no, this article is pretty recent. It's April 4th of 2023, uh, so about a year out. Um, but who knows? These records, they should be standing. I don't know. We'll see. All right, brother. I think that does it for the Yeah, news. we got through a wired uh, nerdy news and All right. no AI. No AI. That's a, that's a rarity for us here. All right. So... Everybody knows that Doug is a massive fan of keynotes. Yep. And with that, there was a recent keynote by Google. And like I said, at the top of the show, I missed it, unfortunately. So we're going to have to rely on Doug to walk us through what these things are. And I'll be probably, I'm sure, asking a bunch of questions. Uh, I uh, believe I'm super caffeinated and ready to go, hopefully. All right. Hopefully so you remember you things better than you did a moment ago. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so if you all don't want to watch the whole thing, I think it's about an hour, hour and a half. There are a ton of videos by CNET and The Verge and Android Authority on uh, YouTube that give you the whole spiel in about 10 to 20 minutes. I love it when they do that. So I'll kind of try to do the same thing a lot shorter and give you all the spiel. The big topic, of course, for them, we didn't get it in the nerdy news, but we got it in this is AI, AI, AI. So Google is big time pushing their Gemini AI service. They uh, start out by talking about that, and then they talk about Project Astra. So that's kind of their future endeavor, and uh, I believe they're going to do some one-on-one -on -one conversations uh, using that and pushing it to other platforms. Is that like, is that their AI that's like a version of Gemini or something? Or Yeah, I they didn't really talk a lot about, about Project Astra, and I didn't catch the very first of it. Gotcha. But, uh, See if it's in the article. Yeah. No, they don't mention it even in the article. Okay. So. All right. Cool. The, Keep going. The You're big good. thing they had was hardware, though. That's, this okay. is kind of their time to shine. The first thing they released, and it was very, it was funny to me. So I was watching live, and I had to make sure, you know how sometimes if you pause, your live kind of keeps going without you. So before they even talked about the Pixel 9, YouTube popped up a ad on the bottom that said Pixel 9 for sale. Well, that's I'm hilarious. thinking, they haven't even told us about it. So I that's just so thought funny. that was kind of funny. That is kind of funny. They're a little ahead of the game. Marketing is getting... Getting up there now. Let me. I do want to say this. We're looking at a picture of the nines. So there's two sizes that are on the screen. I've heard a lot of people are giving static about the camera bump. If you guys can't see it, if you're listening by audio, basically where the camera is, it's horizontal at the top of the phone on the back side of the phone. It actually sticks out uh, from it, and it's not uniform with the body. Like, have you heard that, Doug? I have. So my Pixel 8, it's in an OtterBox right now. I'm kind of showing oh, you I can see it. my Pixel 8 Pro, but this is a very big bump. Mm -hmm. The OtterBox does a good job of making it all flat on you, the back, but it so definitely the, the Pixel 8 up. has the same design. It has the same bump. Okay, I'm with so you. So maybe this is bigger than the Pixel 8 bump, but uh, gotcha. it looks the same to me. Okay, got it. Cool. I'll keep on rolling. So as keep, they go along, you know, you have your models always. Your Pixel mm -hmm. 9 is kind of your entry model. Uh, you're going to have lesser internal specs, lesser camera, the 9 Pro, and then the 9 Pro XL. Uh, just like uh, iPhone, I'm sure. You know, you have your 15, your Pro, your Pro Max. Mm -hmm. This is the same way on here. And they also okay. have the Pixel 9 Pro Fold. Yeah, so that was interesting. Last year, they had the Pixel Fold. They mm -hmm. dropped that and gave it the Pixel 9 Pro Fold. Hmm. And what I believe in that is you're going to get uh, better internal specs okay. and better cameras on your Pro Fold. Okay. So the they're leaning into folding. Yeah. And it looks really good. I think they've really worked out all the bugs. I've heard really good reviews so far okay. on some of the videos I've watched. Whew. Is that price right? Yes. $1,799 for the Fold? 
Yowie. That's the same price for the Samsung Fold and the <sighs> OnePlus Fold, I believe. Do you know what kind of a gaming machine you could build for that? Oh, <laughs> yeah, I'm not Dear. into foldable phones until God. they get to normal prices. Well, and you're right, because it's the novelty. Boy, that's like, oh, wow. You think you had to worry about breaking one screen. Now you've got to <laughs> worry about breaking three screens. I don't know about that. That's pretty high. Wow. Okay, sorry. That sticker shock. No, you're uh, good. Phones are expensive anyway, but that just seems. Whew. And so, and I I see real quick. I see that the Pixel Nine you mentioned is for uh, the smaller model is seven ninety nine. Pixel Pro is nine ninety nine, and the XL, which is a third one, I think, is it a bigger size than this? Is the Pro yeah, bigger than? Okay. The uh, Pro should be a little bigger, I think, than the nine. Okay. And then the XL, that's what I have now, is I have the Pixel 8 Pro. Okay. But it didn't have the XL version. Of it. <clears throat> Got it. So it's $1,100. So, yeah, I just, I just wanted to mention those prices that they did say that before you go on about the, the features of them. And that is interesting because I paid nine ninety nine for my Pixel Pro. Mm, that's much better. my 8 Pro XL. Okay. Okay. Uh, some of the cool things they're doing now is uh, 12 gigabytes of RAM uh, for the standard model, 16 gigabytes of RAM for those pro models. Mm -hmm. the, one of the things that got the crowd excited is satellite SOS messaging. Do you know where they got the idea, the idea hmm. from? Hmm. So uh, satellite oh. SOS messaging we talked about back in the Apple keynote in the spring. Yeah, May. If you're yeah. out somewhere, no cell phone towers, no service at all. At least you'll be able to kind of uh, align your phone. It shows you, I believe, from the Apple keynote that there will be these satellites and they'll kind of tell you if you've locked onto one and send an emergency message out. Yep. Yep. What else? Uh, the other thing, uh, you know, Pixel is really, really known for the cameras, and I thought this was the coolest feature I've ever seen. It's called Pixel Add Me. I love this. So I did see this. So there's uh, about three or four of us. So uh, three of us are taking the picture, or getting our picture taken. The fourth guy takes the picture. But hey, we want the fourth guy in the picture. So it has AI to uh, let you swap. So say guy number three, guy number four switches. Guy number four gets his picture taken. Now all four of you are in the picture if I didn't confuse anyone. Yeah, so essentially, let me take another swing at it there, Doug. Yeah. So basically, you want to take a group photo, uh, but you got somebody that needs to take the photo. So everybody gets in the group except for one person. They take the photo. Everybody gets out of the frame. That one person that's not in the photo gets in it, hands it to a friend. It superimposes yeah. the group photo all right in front of the camera and they say hey keith go left 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 right right because you can see where the people are standing mm -hmm. and then you tap it and then it takes three separate photos essentially where one's the group ai stitches it all together and it looks like you're all together versus you can also have the individual person and then the the one with the, the group i did see I, I did see this on uh, i think it was you know one of the ads or something once this, so I, I knew about this one but I didn't see it. I didn't watch Keynote, obviously, but I did see this. But I thought this was an awesome feature. Oh, yeah. It's crazy. And I think Apple will definitely steal it. I hope so. Because yeah. that's what they do. They big borrow. It's cat and mouse, right? I you know, like the satellite thing. Like There's stuff that Google did first, like USB-C or, you know, or Android does first. And then, yeah, it's what they do. They beg, borrow, and, and procure from each other. Yeah. So say, along the same lines of uh, editing your photos, Pixel is... Uh, ramping up their magic editor mm -hmm. so it allows you to take a picture of yourself and then you can just put all kinds of stuff in the background say you take a picture of yourself you want uh, a starry night so you say hey add a starry night behind me uh gemini's ai will add a starry night and it looks very convincing so hmm. far from the screens i've seen okay the uh, cool. next thing they move on to is watches uh, they've got two new sizes I had a Pixel Watch 2. It was really small. I've got huge wrists. It didn't really fit me. But hmm. this year, they've got the new 41 millimeter and 45 millimeter sizes, 349 and 399, respectively. They've got uh, still that license deal with uh, Fitbit. So you're going to get all your Fitbit tracking, all your apps and your running programs, exercise programs. Fitbit they, does a good job. That's a good partnership. Yeah. They kind of shocked the crowd this year because they added a new feature to track your uh, medical uh, diagnostics. Oh, so like uh, I know with the i the iWatch, it does EKG um, and it does 
uh, your oxygen. It does your, it can detect if you're going to have a seizure, those kinds of things. So I'm assuming it's similar to yeah. that. Uh, I believe, let me go down here. 41 millimeter and 45 millimeter in size, it looks like. It's funny they went straight up round with it, like edge to edge. That's interesting. Yeah, so I've yeah. looked at that, and I've looked at the uh, Apple Watch. I'm kind of liking the square more than the circle. Mm -hmm. You think more things would fit in it oh, yeah. you know, a little bit better. But still, though, you know, yeah. not throw any shade on it. I'm sure it's just fine. You know, they talk about Pixel Buds as well. Not a lot of uh, changes. They've got a bigger uh, chip. They've added it to their Tensor line. Mm -hmm. But instead of Tensor 1, 2, 3, it's an A1 okay. for their little uh, Pixel Buds, noise canceling, uh, Gemini Live as well. Okay. So they did kind of going back to keynotes. I like that keynotes are in the moment and they're live. While they were doing a uh, Gemini Live uh, experiment or test on stage, it failed. Oh, what? Which, wait, wait, say that again? Gemini failed? Yeah, so they gave it a, a uh, prompt, and uh, it failed twice, but then they got it on third try. So really? that is shocking to some, but to me, that's also, hey, it's okay, it's live, because things fail for us out here in the uh, civilian market, the consumer market. Uh, you might that, find it. I yeah, think. I was actually clicking through here. That's interesting. Well, you know what? In a way, it's good, because then you, you know that they're not it's not a staged uh, demo. It's not a, you know, so that's, I think I that's think the good you're thing. on the wrong one. You need the it's made by Google event made by Google event. Got it. So as you're finding that, like I said, it failed twice, but to me, that doesn't bother me. That just shows, Hey, sometimes maybe it didn't understand your prompt. Maybe it didn't uh, get your, the, all the cell phone signals, cell phone service out here. This one right here. Yeah. Gotcha. Oh, we found it. It's so uh, for those listening, we're watching the uh, Made by Google event here. Uh, the guy and gal are getting ready to do a prompt with Gemini Live, and it's going to uh, fail. Looks like they took a photo of a list of something. Yeah. So I believe what he's trying to do is, hey, check these um, check concert my dates. Yeah, he said, check and, my calendar, see if I'm available for these concerts. Yeah. That's what he said. Yeah. And then it kind of times out. <laughs> you can see him thinking, oh, my God, I hope I don't He's get like, fired. Oh, God. Sure. Oh, there it goes. Sure. I found Sabrina Carpenter coming to San Francisco. Yeah. So, oh, so it did work a couple for others, and they fail. But to me, that doesn't bother me at all since it's live. So. Well, eh, it's also new. I didn't. Again, it does prove that it's a live demo. Now, the one thing I thought was interesting, as you can see in this guy's hand, they are not doing Gemini Live tests with the new Pixel. They're doing it with a Samsung phone. That is fascinating. I, I, I just caught that attention to detail. <laughs> Don't you think they would have used a Pixel? Yeah, they just announced the new Pixel. Why aren't they using it? Or at, at least a Pixel 8. Yes. Yeah. That is weird, isn't it? Yeah, so he it looks like he uh, has a brand new uh, S24 Ultra right there. That does not look good, in my opinion. <laughs> no, you're marketing uh, Samsung's hardware. <laughs> It tells you everything you need to know. That would be like uh, Apple getting up there and being like, hey, okay, we're going to do uh, a demo. Oh, uh, let me get my Samsung out. <laughs> so it's funny, after they kind of had the failure there, uh, every time now they're like, we're doing it live. This is a live demo. Now she's live. using, she just called it out. She's using a Motorola Razor. Yes. So I guess it's a shout out for the Android operating system that it works on other devices. I think so. I, it, they're probably trying to spread the love on, on but why showing at a hardware event is what I would say. The, the events called hashtag made by Google. Like yes. you, you wouldn't like, I could see them doing this if it was a Google or an Android OS event. Like, you know how Apple will only focus on software and that sort yeah. of thing. Mm -hmm. I could see that because that OS runs on many different hardware but platforms. not at your hardware event. It's actually called your hardware event. Oh, by the way, if you don't want a pixel, Check out ones. the uh, S24 Ultra or the Moto Razor. The screen's way better on the Samsung. <laughs> I don't know. That's just weird to me. That's so it is odd. Weird. But, what else? Um, so anything else on this? Now yeah, we got this you know, one? they kind of go back into Gemini AI. They've added 1.5 Pro. I think uh, ChatGPT is up to 4 
Yeah, and four. four they call it four O. It's just four O. Yeah. Okay. Uh, they're embedding uh, Gemini AI into all their Google Suite apps, uh, typing emails, working on spreadsheets. Uh, the thing on the screen now, call notes. Uh, Gemini AI is going to give you a summary of your call. That kind of worries me because it has to, in my mind, I think, uh, listen to the entire call and then summarize it for you. So mm, privacy that, concerns. That kind of scares me about privacy. Yes. Yeah, I mean, no worries. Is me. it helpful? Yeah, sure. But uh, that's a concern. Gemini Nano is going to be uh, handling requests on device. So okay. for those that don't know, you don't have to go out to the cloud. You don't really have to have a signal to do some of those uh, AI requests on your phone. There will hmm. be a Gemini, what they're calling Nano, on the phone. So it's like a small build of the learning language model locally so that probably you can get faster responses mm -hmm. yeah. uh, for things. Like, for example, if you just ask a general question, like math question or things like that, it won't have to go to the cloud. They're also doing that to probably um, keep the computing costs in the cloud for server compute down because yeah. if you can use the device for that. So. Now, one of the things I liked, and you've had Apple devices longer than me, is uh, they announced Gemini Live. So just a open-ended conversation with uh, their Gemini AI, asking questions back, well, not back and forth, but uh, to them, asking another one, another one, another one, without having to give the prompt, you know, like, hey, Siri, or hey, Google, yep. whatever. Um, Siri sucks. I'm just going to tell you what it is. <laughs> she can't do that very well. She, I mean, you can say... Oh, watch me say you can say hey siri i have to say that quietly just because yeah, my phone just activated uh but it's for a single prompt to have a continuous conversation doesn't work well open ai does this best in my opinion however remember and this is my next question after you watch this it kind of that's a great segue open ai is going to integrate into the apple phone this fall with ios 18 how much because you said this was all you watch this all ai driven how much of this do you think is they're concerned about that because let's just put the cards on the table. Yes, OpenAI was first, but I th I'm pretty sure I'm confident in saying that everyone knows that right now, and this could change. OpenAI has a leg up over Gemini. It's a it's a better AI, and it's going to be integrated into their competitor. So you watch this. What are your thoughts on that? Do you think that they're they're worried about it, and that's why they're cramming so much? Or look what ours can do. Like, what are your what? You take a step back. You've seen both Apple. You've seen this. You're kind of in between the ecosystems. What are your thoughts on what's going on here between the two companies and the competition that's going on? What's your take, just as a novice outside viewer? Yeah, you know, I have watched a bunch of keynotes, both from Apple, both from Samsung. Even they don't do very many, and Google. I think Google is definitely worried. I have used uh, ChatGPT and the Gemini apps on my phone. I uh, always get better uh, results from ChatGPT, and it seems so much faster. I think they're definitely worried. You look at the time spent on these sections of this uh, live event. Uh, they talk about the Pixel. They talk about the uh, Buds and the Watch very quickly in my opinion really they don't spend a lot of time on it and then they go back to what jim and i could do uh, and you know on the uh, samsung there and the motorola they talk about what jim and i can do on that so i think they're really trying to build that up in anticipation of the apple event which historically speaking is always the second week of september i believe mm -hmm. yep and uh we're about a month away and i'm well, sure we're kind of worried as a Google team to see what they have. Well, in the last event that Apple did, which we covered here, you can go back and look at the podcast, it was iPad focus. Remember that? Mm -hmm. They did, the first half of it was loaded with iPad and the new chips, M3s, going all the way down to M4s, wherever they're going to go with it. And then out of nowhere, they spent like 45 minutes on the AI and iOS 18. And it was like everybody didn't expect that. I almost think that that put them on their heels they probably didn't expect apple to be as far along as they are they also probably didn't yeah. expect a, an agreement deal between open ai and and apple so and it's gonna get interesting i mean oh, geez, yeah the Smart. things that uh chat gpt has uh done so far and is capable of doing in the near future yeah added to a major phone developer hardware developer is uh pretty big i think siri needs help <laughs> Siri and ChatGPT hopefully uh, co-mingle great and hopefully. Uh, powers her uh, big time. 
All right, man. Anything else before we wrap this up about the keynotes? Any final thoughts on the keynotes before we I shut down the share here? You know, I've uh, recently got an iPad. I've recently started slowly joining the iOS world. Watching this, it didn't really get my excitement too much. You know, I'm anticipating getting an iPhone. but So uh, it didn't make you question your, no. your lean that you've been... You know, I watched it in worry of maybe this will drag me back to getting a new Android, but it didn't have anything really that got me. You know, gotcha. I've got the call waiting. I've got the uh, Pixel image editor. I've got a great, great camera. So yeah, okay, nothing too shocking so far. That's an interesting assessment, considering that you're considering to make the the pivot, and that there wasn't anything in here. Because if there was, obviously, you probably would open mind. Like, well, maybe I should wait a little bit. That's an interesting yeah. take. All right. Awesome, man. I think we got another one in the bag. Yeah. A uh, really great episode. We want to thank everybody for listening. Uh, we'll try to bring you articles that are important to us, but also entertaining for you. And we uh, thank you for tuning in each week. Yeah. Do not forget about the merch store that we have out there. It's going to be getting cool soon in the fall. We got hoodies. We got all kinds of fun stuff. And there's something out there I think we're going to add, Doug. I haven't told you about it yet. Uh oh. Wired Nerdy Coffee. Oh, no no, joke. I would be excited about that. So we're probably going to get that added on the store. I saw that I got an email saying, hey, would you guys be interested? And so we're going to I'm going to see if I can uh, slap our logo on it. We're going to have to come up with a fun name for it, though. Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) We'll throw it into AI. See what it says. (laughs) All right, everybody. You have an awesome week. We will see you next episode. Thank you for joining us. And that'll do it for this episode. We really appreciate it. Take care. See ya.